Sarah and Lawrence Mwebi have until the end of today to provide reasons to President Cyril Ramaphosa why they should not be suspended. This follows a successful application by Freedom Under Law, forcing the President to institute an inquiry into their fitness to hold office. Advocate Zola Majavu, representing Jiba and Mwebi, said earlier the pair will meet President Ramaphosa's deadline of today. Jiba and Mwebi's legal challenges started in 2016. They were struck off the role of advocates by the High Court in Pretoria. The court found that they were unprofessional, dishonest and acted fraudulently in their handling of political cases. The two were then placed on special leave. They subsequently appealed the High Court decision at the Appeals Court in Bloemfontein and a High Court ruling was overturned. Three judges agreed that Jiba and Mwebi must not be struck off the roll. Two judges said in a dissenting judgment that the High Court decision was correct. Meanwhile, President Cyril Ramaphosa withdrew former President Jacob Zuma's 2017 appeal against the High Court order. The order compelled him to institute disciplinary inquiries against the pair. Ramaphosa set up an inquiry to determine their fitness to hold office. Jiba and Mwebi returned to work last month. Now, we know that state capture hearings will begin on Monday. We know that the deputy prosecution in Boston, Mtobojiba, and her colleague Lawrence Murebi have until the end of today to make their submissions as to why they should stay in their respective positions. And on Monday as well, the Constitutional Court will announce its decision on whether Sean Abrams' appointment as head of the NPA was unconstitutional. Joining us in the studio to unpack all of this is legal journalist from TISO Blackstar, Karen Morn. Karen, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, we do know Deputy Prosecution Boss Nobojiba and a colleague obviously have to make their submissions by the end of today. If they do make their submissions on time, what happens next? Well, we have spoke, I've spoken to their attorney, Zola Majabu, and I've also spoken to Kosello Diko from the presidency. Both of them have confirmed that, in fact, those submissions were made before the 5 o'clock deadline. I think they were filed at around half past four this afternoon. Um, of course, that taking place within literally hours of the Constitutional Court announcing that they were going to make that landmark decision on the leadership or continued leadership of Sean Abrams of the NPA. But essentially... We have seen situations where under the, the Zuma presidency, he asked, for instance, Sean Abrams to make submissions to him on why he should not be suspended in the wake of the whole Pravin Gordon saga when you know charges were put in place and then two weeks later withdrawn. Um, and we also saw the similar thing happening with Nongobo Jiba at the height of all this litigation. Zuma then ex accepting their explanations and choosing not to suspend them. Um, in the case of Jiba, of course, she was on special leave. Uh, the president does have a certain level of discretion to decide whether he suspends her, them or not, but um, given the kind of heat that is surrounding this whole issue, given that in his State of the Nation um, address just within days of being appointed, he highlighted so-called leadership issues at the NPA as being at the heart of what his administration would seek to tackle. I would be qu quite surprised if the president did not suspend the pair. I think he wants to be seen to be doing the procedural appropriate things. We know Zola Majabu has come out and said they appreciate that he's following proper procedure, but I would be extremely surprised surprised if off the back of those submissions he he does in fact um, choose not to to suspend them now we do know political analyst Soma Doda Fikeni says the current developments at the MPA have badly affected its credibility and ability to fight serious crime what is your take on that statement I think the NPA has been struggling with credibility issues since the removal of Wusi Piccoli over the, you know, pursuing uh, the corruption prosecution of Jackie Salebi. Um, it's never really recovered. It has never had a national director of public prosecution fulfill his full term. We saw Menzi Similani removed, um, his appointment being found to be irrational by the Constitutional Court. Um, obviously, Mkolisi um, Mkasana, the, the, uh, you know, the former NPA head, um, that golden handshake deal which the president subsequently Zuma admitted was was illegal um, you know Jiba had acted as the head of the NPA uh, made a series of decisions with regard to the prosecution of um, Richard and Bluley a crime intelligence boss who is a self-proclaimed Zuma loyalist I mean it's just been one scandal one lurching from one scandal to the next and I think that many South Africans um, do not necessarily feel 
that they have a huge amount of faith in the NPA. So I think that the president is acutely conscious of that, whether those perceptions are fair or not. Certainly these are questions that need to be answered. And in his latest uh, to Mkwebi and Jiba, he highlighted the fact that these four judgments that have been made against them in multiple different cases, all of whom were somehow linked to former President Jacob Zuma, really eroded you know, public faith um, in the NPA and that's why it was so important that these issues be addressed in an open public inquiry into their fitness so they could finally um, be put to rest. Karen we are running out of time but let's now speak about the state uh, capture inquiry. Now the Constitutional Court will on Monday obviously announce its decision. Um, uh, renowned senior counsel Vim Trengrove stated that any outcome at the Constitutional Court that left Sean Abrams in office would make a mockery of the Constitution. Do you agree? Well, essentially what the argument this there is, is that if you appoint or you remove the head of the prosecution service in a highly unlegal, illegal and unconstitutional way, but then the person that replaces them um, is allowed to remain in office, you're effectively rewarding the illegality. And I think the court is trying to walk a very fine line between not making pronouncements on Sean Abrams' fitness to hold office, because that's not the issue here, but making a sound determination around a contractual legal issue. If indeed, as the president, former President Zuma admitted, that golden handshake deal was illegal, what are the legal consequences of that? And Vim Trengrove arguing very, very powerfully that the legal consequence of that must be that Sean Abrams is removed from office. Now, Deputy Chief Justice uh, Raymond Zonda says the Commission of Inquiry into State Capture will be long and expensive. During a media briefing recently, they said the Commission is likely to go on for about two years and cost the taxpayer 230 billion in the first six months. What effectively happens from August when public hearings are set to commence? Well, I think there's been a lot of preliminary kind of forensic investigation and we know there's a great deal of concern from the Deputy Chief Justice around issues of confidentiality, already suggesting that a number of witnesses have come forward who have want to give their evidence in secret outside of the public glare. I think that's going to be one of the main issues in this inquiry. We know, of course, that um, the Deputy Chief Justice went to court to get that six-month period that had been laid down for this inquiry extended to two years, but that order has not been final and made final and my understanding is that opposition parties and organizations like for instance CASAC may very well challenge the Deputy Chief Justice on that extension and ask him to explain why he needs this additional time but what we expect to kick off on Monday is that he's going to sort of give a framework of the investigations we know they've been outlined by the terms of reference they're at the heart of the pub former public protector Tuli Manansela state of capture report and I think the pivotal issues will be the so-called secrecy around certain witnesses and whether or not that is challenged in any kind of substantive way. Thank you so much Karen for joining us. That was rather insightful as it usually is. We definitely keep, will keep in touch as the state capture inquiry progresses. Thanks so much. That was Tiso Blackstar legal journalist Karen Morn. Don't forget to please send us your questions and opinions to hashtag the full view and maybe you could be joining us in the studio to take uh, this discussion further. Let's now wrap up and focus our attention on the world of sports. In your sports